1380C. Conklin and Company with 13ABC Action News anchor Lee Conklin. First with what's happening behind the headlines and take three, our panel of political analysts. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome into another edition of Conklin and Company. Today on the program, bringing economic development to Toledo. We're going to tell you about a major conference coming up next weekend at the Park Inn in downtown Toledo. That's on the way in Take 3 today. Our Take 3 political panel getting the week off. We'll get back to the run for the White House next week. But first, welcoming in a, a Toledo legend. In town this week for the I-75 rivalry, which actually took place last night which is actually tomorrow as we tape here on Friday afternoon. Hello. It is Chuck <laughs> Ely. How you doing, Lee? Great to see you. It's good to be here. Um, and, and Toledoans who, uh, who born and bred here, I think know the story pretty well. Some maybe newcomers to town don't. Mm -hmm. um, Chuck Ely, 35 wins in a row back in the 70s, 27 wins in high school in a row right, right. without a loss. Right. Uh, a Grey Cup championship, first year in Canada. Right, right. Um, and then a successful business career after that. So it is, yeah. it is a fantastic to, to have on the program, Chuck. It's always great to come back to Toledo. I probably get into here four or five times a year, and sometimes very quietly, uh, but it's always good to come back. And as we tape here on Friday, we can't say what happened with the big game last night, yeah. <laughs> which was actually Saturday night. But right. uh, you're in town to, to watch Bowling Green and, and your alma mater go at it this year. Both teams one and one. And you still follow. Toledo football, college football, very closely. Right? Oh yeah, I do some work for the Harris Poll, uh, and, and, but also make sure that I check either on the computer or wherever I can pick up the Toledo games as much as I can. So I know when they have uh, been very successful or when they've had a tough night by uh, checking it very quickly when I'm at home. And, and what's your feeling when when they named mm -hmm. uh, UT named uh, uh, Coach Campbell uh, the head coach, youngest coach uh, in America, right? I mean, it's uh, well, obviously it sounded like from everybody else it was pretty good because I only knew him as an assistant to mm -hmm. Coach Beckman, but uh, and I've met him a couple of times now and we've talked and uh, he has all the enthusiasm as you want to have for a head coach. Mm -hmm. So age is no matter as long as you get the job done. Yeah, and and, and your thoughts on on college football uh, as a whole, Chuck? You take a look at the uh -huh. landscape yeah. of, of college football. Where where it stands today and how far it's come from when you played. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, come a long way. Yeah. I think we, we only had one network kind of watching the games, and there was no ESPN and all those right. other things going. So there's a lot of information now comes out, and there is a lot of excitement in the game. And since I've been doing some work with the Harris Poll, I've been paying a lot more attention to all the games across the country mm -hmm. as much as I possibly can. And just watching this uh, this massive explosion, explosion right? of these teams play is just tremendous. Yeah, and your thoughts on, on – the uh, the southern schools have begun to do really dominate the mm -hmm. game now, um, yeah. and and as you watch that from you know you're up in Canada, yeah. you know working your b businesses and what have yeah. you, but you watch that and the SEC gets it seems to just dominate. Uh, how come? Well, I, I think I think a lot of it has to do. It's going to sound like crazy, but I think a lot of it has to do with the climate and the weather. Mm -hmm. I mean, they get a lot of good athletes because they're playing running and passing year-round. They have more of a passing attack than many of the other teams, but they also right. have uh, the access to a lot of teams from Texas and Florida and a lot of those good schools, as well as coming up north and getting from the, the Ohio's and that type of thing. But I, I think that their, their, their play is a lot more movement and throwing, a lot more excitement than some of the things we traditionally have seen in the Big Ten, yeah. you know, pound, pound, yeah. pound. Yeah. And the whole uh, cloud so the of kids dust want, Yeah, the, the, whole, the, <laughs> the kids want to play. I mean, they want yeah. to get into that exciting type of game. And part of that, I, I think, and, and documented in your documentary, mm -hmm. uh, Chuck Healy Undefeated, uh, when you played, uh, the game has changed so much. Uh, <laughs> you were a black quarterback. Yeah. Not everybody was happy about that, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was you know, the, but now you have Cam Newton, RG, RG3, and then yep. coming in and just, just making in, incredible uh, – uh, inroads yep. in uh, long overdue. Doug Williams yep. uh, broke barriers, but you broke a, bar a barrier uh, yourself. A and explain what it was like going through that process, just years removed from the 67 ride in Detroit, Chuck. You know, uh, yeah, it, it almost sounds kind of archaic and time-wise. Mm -hmm. It's a time mm -hmm. warp, but it was just a sign of the times. It was where we were, and, and I tell people now, uh, both in a documentary as well as when I speak, I said, we were in a huge social change. And Martin Luther King assassination, Kennedy, uh, the whole thing was All a mess. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but at the same time, you knew the progression that was happening uh, as the world moved forward, that these type of things were going to happen. And uh, as far as more African-American quarterbacks uh, playing and getting actually to play the quarterback, not only 
in college, but in, in the, the pros. The pros. Yeah. Uh, so this has always been a, a, a good thing to see as they look back in history and see the changes, you know, other things that were barriers, no longer barriers right. to allow, allow some people to play. When I think about uh, yourself and Warren Moon, Warren Moon went yeah. to Canada yeah. and was able to parlay that into an incredibly successful career in the right. NFL. Uh, were there chances for you, Chuck? I mean, you're leading the University of Toledo to 35 victories in a row. Right. And and you're here thinking, do I, do I have a shot to go to the National Football League? I mean, what was your mindset back then? Well, you know, and I just was speaking about this the other night and doing the, the book launch with the, with uh, my daughter. And I said, uh, my issue was to get my degree. You know, it's directly mm -hmm. enough. I, I really wasn't even thinking about pro ball until the, the, my senior year when a few people came around and asked. And uh, once I got my degree, or we're looking heading towards that, I was kind of free to make sure I make the decision. So going into the NFL as a defensive back or wide receiver mm -hmm. wasn't an option for me. Uh, so I just said, you know what, don't want to do that. Uh, I'll go on into the business world or whatever I want to do if I don't get a chance. And then the Canadian Football League came down right. and says, you know, we'd like to come and play, play up here. And so regardless of what happened, that's, that, that's the end result. And uh, so it wasn't um, a, a huge deal for me as most, mm. most people would have thought because I had right. sent a letter to the NFL and sort of said, you know, please, guys, if you're going to draft me, draft me as a quarterback and, and not as a defense. And that was not going to happen. That was not going to happen. And, and it had nothing to be arrogant. I wasn't trying right. to be arrogant or anything. It was just what I believed that I could do and wanted to do. Why do you think that was the case, Joe? Well, I think it was, it was a sign of the times. Yeah, there, yeah, was no, there, was, there was no African-American quarterbacks right. out there. Uh, I think it was pretty evident in regards to even what Christine Bre Brennan's dad said, mm -hmm. you know, that, you Jim know, Brennan, it's not going to happen. Yeah, it's yeah. not going to happen uh, in the NFL. And I thought that was very astute by him, who was, who was already around, and I didn't hear about this until mm -hmm. many years later from Christine, uh, that that was the case. Uh, but I really wasn't um, surprised that it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the same time, I, I thought that should have been overshadowed by the fact of a 35-0 and 0 record. Yeah, and the fact that you had success right away, mm -hmm. Chuck, in the Canadian Football League. Did, yep. Was there a thought then that you could you could head south? Y yeah, there was some discussion about that, but I was in the middle of a contract, and then there was a mm -hmm. USFL that came oh, in, sure? and there was yeah. other teams. That, and so there was a lot of discussion on both sides of the border. And then finally, I understood that I only wanted to play five to seven years of professional ball and then move on with my family and my life. And, and that's, that's all you I did? did. That's right? all I did. I seven, did seven years. years. Right, right to the number. Wow. And then, and then the next phase of your life began. Mm -hmm. Life after high yeah. school football, winning every game, college football, winning yeah. 35 in a row, yeah. tangerine bowls, uh, great cups. And then, uh, and then other things started to happen for you. And I want to talk about that, too, when we come back. Okay. Rocket legend Chuck Ely, our guest on Conklin & Company. We're back in just a minute. 